Hi and welcome to HomeKit Authority. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through how to install Hoobs on a Raspberry Pi. Out of the box system, or Hoobs for short, is a plug and play hub that makes smart accessories compatible with your favorite ecosystem. Now, before we get started and you're new to this channel, this is HomeKit Authority and we cover everything from news, reviews and tutorials. And we'll be making more videos around the Hoobs system and how to install various different accessories. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. Also follow us on our social media channels at Follow HomeKit. And don't forget everything that's mentioned in this video, there is links in the description below to take you to either to download it or to be able to purchase the piece of equipment that you need. Oobs is simple to use and it's designed to be accessible for beginners yet robust and versatile enough for advanced users. So you'd want to use Hoobs with HomeKit if you've got, say, a device that is not compatible natively with HomeKit. For instance, the Nito Robot Vacuum Cleaner, Dyson Air Purifiers, or even SwitchBot Curtains or the SwitchBot Bot. These are not compatible with HomeKit natively. However, using Hoobs, you can integrate them into HomeKit and use them in the same way as any other certified device. And it opens up a world of possibilities for automating your smart home with over 2000 different accessories that are compatible. Started, you need a Raspberry Pi, you also need the relevant power adapter, and I would recommend a case as well. You also need a minimum of a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. You also need a Mac or a PC. In this tutorial, I'm using a Mac, but it's more or less the same instructions. You also need a piece of software called Etcher, which is free to download, and also the Hoob software. Now, everything is in the description below. So moving on to installing and setting up Hoobs. I'm assuming you've downloaded all the software and you've also put your Raspberry Pi together. You simply get your micro SD card and insert it into your computer. You then open the app Etcher. You then choose the option to flash from file. It will then take you to where you've saved the file and you select Hoobs. You then select the target, which is the SD card, which you've set up. And then you press flash. You put in your password and then the flash process will then start. Now this takes anything from two minutes to five minutes, depending on the speed of your computer and the size of the drive. But all you need to do is wait for it to finish. Then once it's done, it will then tell you the flash is complete. Once you've done that, you simply take the micro SD card out of your computer and then insert it into your Raspberry Pi. You then power on your Raspberry Pi and wait about five minutes for the installation to complete. Now the next step is connecting to the Raspberry Pi You've got two ways of doing this. You can use an ethernet cable and all you need to do is plug the ethernet cable into the Raspberry Pi and into a network port connected to your network or you can connect it via Wi-Fi. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to connect it via Wi-Fi because the steps are a little bit more different. So all you need to do is go to your Wi-Fi controller and click on the hoops and then it will bring up this box. You then want to select your home network and then put in your Wi-Fi password and then click connect. It will then apply the changes and then if everything's set up, you then simply connect back to your original access point, which the Raspberry Pi is connected to. And then once it's all set up, you type in hoops.local and then you then simply name your hoops. Now I'm going to call it admin and I'm going to use the username admin and I'm going to use a password that I want to select. Your hoops is then all set up. The first thing you need to do is add the hoops system to your home kit. Now you do this by scanning the home kit code which features in the left hand corner with your iPhone the exact same way as if you would do it with any other device. You simply scan the code and then follow the rest of the setup instructions on the iPhone through a quick overview. Now this is the main screen. This is where the OMAP uh, configuration code is along with various different bits of information. You've also got the next tab which is distinguished by this uh, flashlight symbol. This is where any accessories would be listed that you've added to Hoobs. Now this is a new installation so there's nothing there. You've also got this console panel and this is if you're a more advanced user and you're having issues or you're speaking to developer and you're having issues with the plugin, you can see what is happening and also what error codes you're getting. So once you've got Hoobs installed, then it's pretty much like a HomeKit bridge that sits within HomeKit. Unless you add accessories to it, it's not gonna be much use. So the beauty of Hoobs is everything's done through the user interface. And at the right of the bottom, you've got the area to install plugins. Now you can search for a variety of different plugins and then you then install them. Now, obviously in order to 
get things set up, you need to already have these devices and certain bits of configuration information. For instance, with the Neato robot vacuum cleaners, then uh, once you've installed the plugin, you then need your username and password for your account, which you simply put in here. And this is the beauty of Hoops. You don't have to mess around with configuration files. It does it all for you. And you simply enter your details here. Now, you also can see various bits of information about the Hoops plugin, the types of features that are available within HomeKit or within whichever other platform you're wanting to use. And you also can do some advanced configuration if you want to do that. If you're a more advanced user, you can use uh, some of this code in order to create uh, custom bits of information. It also tells you in this area uh, the types of things to look out for that might not be uh, working correctly. So that's all you need to do to install a plugin. Simply search for that plugin within this section, install the plugin, enter the details it asks for, and then it will be then exposed to HomeKit. So that's the end of the tutorial, and hopefully you found it useful. If you have, don't forget to give me a like, and also if you've got a question or comment, leave it in the comment section below, and I will try and get back to you. Now, we will be making more videos in the Hoop series of how to install and use various different devices using Hoops within HomeKit. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell button. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.